Hey friends, welcome to another episode of Not Your Mama's Podcast. The title of this episode is Break the Cycle of Negative Self-Talk. In this episode, we are speaking with Jade Elizabeth, who is an emotional health coach who is committed to breaking the cycle of your negative self-talk and disempowering inner dialogue. She helps her clients learn to quiet the self-critics and resolve issues such as low self-confidence, inner conflict, anxiety, fears, procrastination, and limiting beliefs. Trained in NLP, which is neuro-linguistic programming, hypnosis, EFT, which is emotional freedom technique, and many forms of energy. Jade helps people on a soul journey to discover their true inner voice, master their inner critic, and step into the person they know they are meant to be by releasing emotional baggage and unraveling those old subconscious beliefs. She is also the best-selling author of the book, Your Amazing Itty Bitty Self-Esteem Book, 15 Essential Steps for Gaining and Keeping High Self-Worth, a Teacher and a Motivational Speaker. Jade Elizabeth, it's such an honor to have you on. I'm excited about this episode because self-talk is, I think, one of the most important things to achieving your goals. But before we dive into this topic, I would love to hear a little bit more about your background and kind of how you got to where you are today. Well, basically, it started because I had no self-esteem. And for me, it was all about learning how to love me and how to accept the person that I was, because um, my story is like most, uh, you know, very bad when you were a kid. I was adopted. I felt like I was thrown away. Um, I was very active, so I was always getting into trouble. So I thought I was a bad seed. So It just went from there downhill to the point where I couldn't even speak to someone who was successful because I didn't think I was good enough. Oh, yeah. And one day I picked up a book. I have no idea how I even got it. I think I was about 17, I think. And it was called Psycho Cybernetics. And for the first time, as I was reading, my words were in my head were in the book. Yeah. And it was like, oh my God, other people think this way too. I'm not all alone. <laughs> because most young people think they're completely alone in how they feel and think. Nobody feels like I feel. And that started my journey to start to heal me. Yeah. No, I love it. I, you know, I'm just like you, a victim of that very negative self-talk um, in my head, limiting beliefs, low self-esteem when I was younger. And I really had to work on it, you know, especially with outside influences kind of coming at me. You feel like, well, what's wrong with me? Like, why am I feeling all attacked? What, what's wrong with my personality? Um, I guess I'm unlovable. No one can, you know, exist. I hear it. I hear it. I hear it from even all my clients. You know, most people don't realize that we were programmed from the time of conception to go negative. Yeah. Because if you look back in, in our history, we started out as cave people, right? And they had no language. But what they were doing is just trying to survive. So if I go out, their thinking is, is there something out there that's going to eat me? Or am I going to be able to find something that can sustain me and my family? So it's just been part of a program that most of us um, have put in there since the beginning. Yeah. Now no. it's up to us to shift and change that. Yeah, no, that, sh- that totally makes sense. I never really thought of it. Like even starting back from cave net cave people time is, you know, well, think about am it. I going to have another day? Am I going to be able to bring the meat home to my family? Are the crops going to be, you know, but there? think about it. If somebody going to get a disease you, and die, <laughs> if somebody texts you, um, when you get this and you get time, could you please quick 
text me back or call me, what's the first thing most people think? Oh my God, something happened. Yeah. And or they, they don't like me negative. or they're mad at me. <laughs> right. You know, they automatically go to a negative. But what if it was, oh my God, I got a raise at work. Something and they bad. just wanted to share the good news. But we always go to that negative place. I always say, and I've said it multiple times, I feel negative energy flows faster than positive energy because it's so much easier to think negative and which it's probably because it's programmed in us. And once we start going on that negative spiral, it's just out of control and it just keeps coming and coming and coming. And then like a negative, another negative thing happens in your day. And then it's just negative, negative, negative. But if we take a moment to sit back and look at the positive, it gradually starts flowing and the energy really starts shifting. And it takes a little while, I think, for it to rev up. But then once it does, it just starts attracting towards you. I mean, that's just how I feel. But the biggest thing is how do you get out of that spiral? Exactly. Okay. And what can we do to get out of that spiral? To me, it's a question. You know, anytime you're in something that doesn't feel good, ask yourself a question. So if you're feeling bad, the what first question I always go to is, hmm, do I really want to feel like this? Of course, I'm going to definitely say no. Yeah. So then what would I rather feel? What would I rather do right at this moment? Mm -hmm. You have to go with the first thought that comes to mind. And most people ignore that first thought because that first thought is your soul talking to you. Yeah. And it's funny. The you second, brought Sorry. The second thought is the ego mind, which then continuously keeps you in that loop of being stuck. Yeah. Um, and it's funny you brought that up because I was just talking to someone earlier and we were talking about usually the first thought is the right answer and to trust yourself and how your mind really does kind of spiral and like maybe talk you out of that answer. And mm -hmm. one, I, one of the things that I suggested was to write down that first thought. So it's solidified and concrete and you don't forget it because sometimes when you start going off with the ego thought that you mentioned, it kind of like makes you forget what the first initial answer was. And well, or most people just ignore it. Exactly. They exactly. just ignore that first thought because it's like, so here's that thought. So now I have to analyze why I got that thought. <laughs> and that's the ego wanting to go in there and start this loop of analyzing what you should have done in the first place. Exactly. So how can negative self-talk affect you in going after your goals? I'm pretty sure it's an easy answer, but it's a great reminder for people to understand how negative self-talk to yourself can hinder whatever you're trying to achieve. Well, when you go into negative self-talk, you take away the choice of what your soul is moving you in the direction of. You know, there are two things in this world that no one can ever, ever take away from you. One is your internal thoughts and the other is your freedom of choice. Mm -hmm. So when you go into that negative self-talk, you're actually taking away your ability to choose what is best for you because you're too busy in the past. Mm -hmm. And how can, what are some things that someone can do today? Ask the question, do I really want this? Do I really want to feel this way? Mm -hmm. What would I rather feel? What else is possible at this moment to change the way I'm feeling? Um, Pick up a book or sit down and take a few breaths. Ground yourself. Think about your feet on the floor. Because usually when we get into that self-talk, we're all up here in our head and we're not present. And usually we're living in the past because that's where a lot of that negative self-talk was programmed. Mm -hmm. But also when you get really stuck, 
you need to come see somebody like me. Totally. That helps you out of it. I think it's important. I mean, I don't think people can do it alone sometimes because it's they can't. I even I, I even see other people because you know every one of us lives in our own uh, little reality. I call it our own box. Okay, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it's difficult sometimes to be able to see what is over the other side of the box because we're stuck here. And the possibilities are not in our privy. So this is another reason why questions are so, so, so important. Mm -hmm. Because the minute you ask a question, your soul or God, source, whatever you want to call it, universe, you're going to get an answer. Yeah. And you will always get an answer. Yeah. And I think it's trusting the answer. We want to talk ourselves out of it. Like we were mentioning earlier, um, you know, the ego just kind of wants to keep you where you are. And Why? Because of fear. Exactly. And fear because is of fear. an illusion, mm-hmm. you know, and it wants to keep you stuck um, and not move you forward in the, you know, your purpose or where you have to go. It's almost like, you know, your shadow side and like your light side. And it's well, you know, we all have to have a shadow side Mm -hmm. because we have to have a negative in order to appreciate a positive. Mm -hmm. If everything in the world was positive, how would we know it was positive if there's no negative? Exactly. There has to be um, a thing. I was going into my book. um, uh, Where is it? Of course. Now that I'm trying to look for it, I can't find it. Um, Ah, that's because it was the very first one. So in my book about talking about aware of your own self-talk, here's what I tell you to do. Begin to pay attention to your words and your thoughts. Even sarcastic sighs can be information. Mm -hmm. start a log or a journal of your negative self-talk you know a lot of times we don't realize the things that we say the biggest thing that most people do is they use the word try and but do you know what the word try actually means no you do without success if you look at it in the dictionary so when you have somebody tell you yeah i'll try or you invite somebody to a party. Yeah, I'll try to come. Do they show up? No. They didn't want to tell you no. So they say, I'll try. Yeah. That's a good. So get the word try out of your vocabulary. Start becoming aware of using that. Even when you say, but, but negates everything you said before that. What are some alternatives to say besides try? And uh, like, um, let's see, I'm going to start exercising. We'll just use this for an example. I'm going to start exercising um, twice a week. So I'm really going to try hard to do that. I'm going to start exercising two times a week. And this is something that I'm going to motivate myself to do. Do you hear the difference? I hear the difference and I feel the difference. I think it's it's so amazing how language is very powerful. And, and if you watch somebody's body, mm-hmm. the body language is even more powerful than the words. Exactly. Because not everyone has the courage to really say what's on their mind. <laughs> but um, the word try is I think a very powerful one and one that people should be mindful of when they want to achieve whatever it is they aspire to do. Mm -hmm. Change their talk, go after the dream life that they desire, um, work out daily habits, things in in that nature, whatever it is for you. Um, I think the try was very mind blowing. And the and, you know. Well, and is okay. Yeah. 
it's a it's a way of you know instead of saying i'll try it or and, but uh huh yeah and what if you do it this way mhm or and what about this other um scenario that you might want to say want to try <laughs> but did you hear how easy that would have flowed out it's so easy of course I feel it is, I it say is that more out. often than not you know uh-huh. I'm gonna try, try, try to be out. better <laughs> <laughs> it's I am going to be better and work well, every day we'll get a little better mm-hmm. oh yeah that's a good one too every day we'll get a little better Today, I'm a little better than I was yesterday. Tomorrow, I'll be a little better than today. I, that's In great. Whatever that is. Okay. Also, well, we talked about asking a question. Um, you also might say, what did I do, say, or accomplish before my negative self-talk? You know, negative self-talk is something that comes out because of what we're thinking at the time. So if we're moving forward in something and all of a sudden that old program, this is the reason I love the tapping, the EFT, um, for the simple fact that, let me explain how the mind works, okay? Mm -hmm. If I might. So. The amygdala in the brain is your fight or flight response, okay? It's actually what tells you to uh, run or stay and fight, one of the two. So let's say you have a program that says I'm unworthy and you haven't changed that program yet. It's like a, a program on your computer. So if I go in and try to do something that that program isn't supposed to do, what would happen? The computer would crash, yeah. right? And go, hey, That's what happens to us. Mm -hmm. We have this program that says this. So we're going along, we're thinking positive, we're doing everything we need to do. And then the amygdala and the program says, uh, wait a minute. That is not how we work. And whammo, open mouth, insert foot. And you just <laughs> killed everything that you were trying to do. Mm -hmm. This is why it's so important to find out where the root of the problem is and actually change it, fix it, change it. Go see somebody, pick up um, a book on uh, tapping or um, on uh, reprogramming and do whatever needs to be done. It's not like it's going to go overnight, but with no. tapping, it can actually break within one to two sessions, depending if you can get to the actual root. Yeah, it's it always sounds easier said than done. It has to be worked on every day and you have to be mindful. And even when you feel like not working on it, you need to work on it. You need to show yep. up for yourself because the mind is so powerful. And like we talked about in the beginning of the episode, it likes to go negative. It's so of much course. easier to go negative and it takes mindfulness to think positive. It's, it's consciousness. You have to stay in the present moment. Mm -hmm. And most people either live in the past or live in the future. They really do not live in the now. Yeah, especially in today's society. I feel people are more focused on the future of what they want to achieve. How are they going to get there? But you have to be in the moment to get to the future. And, you know, there are a lot of people that live in the past. Like, I can't do this because the past tells me I can't, you know, whatever their circumstances were or um, underlying. You know, I'm not sure who it was that says, never you say you can't. Say yes and then figure out how to do it. And actually, that's one of the things that I do. Whether 
I've ever done it before. It's like, okay, we'll figure this out. And I just sit and have a discussion with God and he tells me exactly what I'm supposed to do. And as long as I follow it, everything seems to work fine. Yeah. And that's going back to trusting yourself. Mm -hmm. Your first initial answer that when you ask, what does, what comes up for you? Um, But you also have to be mindful. Oh, you kind of, what is it? One more time. You also have to be mindful Mm -hmm. of how you look at other people. Mm -hmm. So how many people do you know that are very judgmental? I think a lot of people are very judgmental. Guess what? Everyone that's judgmental, they're going to be judged. And it's going to put them in a bad light. Because Mm -hmm. everything you put out comes back. Mm -hmm. So if you put out love and respect and kindness, that's what you'll get. Mm -hmm. Love and respect and kindness. If you put out anger and resentment or um, jealousy, uh, judging, guess what? You're going to receive that. That's right. All the people that all do that, they will gravitate to you because energy attracts like energy. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. It really is because you can't see energy, but, and so sometimes people have a disbelief in it, but it really is there and it's power. Everything's energy. Yeah. There isn't anything, even this computer, um, the screen, the, the keyboard, it's energy. Everything is energy in this reality. It's just some are denser energy than others. Totally. I love that. Um, so before I get into my four questions to you, do you have anything else you'd like to add? Yeah. Um, one tip of advice is when you are dealing with your friends or family, Mm-hmm. And they're down in the dump. It was like earlier, if I might point out, when I talked about my story and you went, oh, oh. your energy kind of went down. The best thing that you can do for anyone is to keep your energy high because how energy works is the highest energy wins. So if your friend or family member or whoever is crying and talking and feeling bad and and chastising themselves. It's your job to just keep talking to them to lift them up so that both of you feel good. Otherwise, if you come down where they are, now you're both miserable. Totally. Yeah. And thanks for bringing that up uh, and bringing that to my attention. Um. <laughs> Um, so my first question to you is who and what inspires you? Actually, that book, um, the one that the psycho cybernetics, because for the first time in my life, I actually saw that there was a chance of change. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and what is something you wished you knew when you were younger? to trust my intuition, to not listen to what other people tell me Mm -hmm. and pay more attention to what I'm feeling and knowing and trust that. Because I used to be extremely psychic when I was young. And back in my day, it wasn't like it is nowadays. Mm -hmm. So it was like, oh, that's real voodoo. So I had to shut it off for years so that I wouldn't offend anyone. Yeah. I feel though a lot of children, um, they, they come into this world and they, they have psychic abilities and stuff and it gets shut down because of, you can't be this way, you know, school and, and all those things or parents not understanding. So I think a lot of nowadays it's getting better. mm -hmm, Yeah. Yeah. And there's people out there like you to help you know, people understand. (laughs) Yep. Um, Okay. And so my third question is, what's the essential part of your daily routine? Gratitude. Mm -hmm. To me, it's the number one thing that brings everything that you're, it, it, it shifts everything in your life. I give gratitude first thing in the morning. 
And I think about all of the wonderful things that I'm going to achieve that day or that I'm asking God to bring to me that day. Mm -hmm. I'm also giving gratitude for the things that I have. And then at night, before I go to bed, I sit on the edge of my bed and I have a crystal that's kind of egg shape that I hold. So if I'm feeling bad, I can pick it up and all that attitude just rushes into my body. But I give the gratitude for everything that I had for the day. Mm. Like tonight, one of the things that I will be giving gratitude for is our session with each other and how wonderful you are as a, a narrator. It's, it's wonderful. So um, thank you for that. So that would be one of the things that I would give gratitude for. So when I end up laying down to go to sleep, I'm in that higher energy of gratitude. Mm -hmm. Same things first thing in the morning. When I go into gratitude, I am actually opening myself up to a much higher vibration when I start the day. Yeah. And that brings up a really good point. And thank you for that compliment. But it brings up a good point um, starting in the morning because you get on that high frequency level and you're starting off on a positive vibe and then going to bed like that, because sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, things can come in and it really does like kind of knock us off on our track of, you know, feeling high vibed. And you, if you don't do the gratitude at night, which I think is really important because this happened to me later in the week, I kind of went to bed still with negative feelings and I woke up feeling negative and just mm -hmm. kind of had a bad morning and a bad day. So I think it's really important to do that at night as well, because mm -hmm. Absolutely. It really does carry over to the next day. And then it's kind of like a snowball effect that we were talking well, about. Well, I even get thanks. You kind of cut out. A great night's sleep. You give. I, I said, I even give gratitude for a great night's sleep. Yeah. 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 I think it's important. Like, thanks for my night's sleep. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Thank you for this wonderful night's sleep. And waking up tomorrow refreshed and healthy and, and strong. You know, if people really looked around to what they have, there are so many people out there that are terribly, terribly ill. There are so many people out there that are homeless, kids that don't have enough to eat. I mean, what's not to be grateful for? I mean, I sit every day and think about how grateful I am for the things that I do have in my life mm -hmm. just for even for that. Yeah. Kind of warmed yeah. your heart when I said that, didn't it? It did. Yeah. It really does warm my heart. And it just makes me think that there really are just so many people out there struggling And it. And it's kind of funny you brought that up because I was going to bed the other day and I was like, I need to give more, you know, like volunteer my time more um, and, and give back because I think that's, also, you receive so much by giving back to mm -hmm. others. It really, I remember when I was in high school, I made it a point to give one compliment to someone a day and it ended up spiraling. I'd be like, oh, I love your shoes. Oh, I love this. Mm -hmm. And I was feeling so good. Like I was giving everyone compliments on little things. Um, and I noticed such a difference on that. Like when you give to others, you are receiving so much more than you well, sure, because when you give, you get back tenfold. Yeah. It's a law. It's a universal law. It always happens. So if you give money, you get tenfold money back. Yeah, it's true. I mean, isn't that in the Bible too? It, it might be. Yeah. Yeah. That's why they call um, the the word tithing. That's where that comes from. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then my last question to you is, best advice you've ever received? Best advice that I ever received. Okay. So because of my low self-esteem years ago, I was a perfectionist. I felt that everything had to be absolutely perfect. Even though a hundred million times I heard there is no such thing as perfect. Didn't matter. I was going to do and make it the perfect every time. 
and I was sitting in a mastermind group and the gentleman that was running it made a statement. And, you know, I believe that you hear what you need to hear from the right person when they give it. Doesn't matter if it's your friend, if it's a business associate, if it's somebody like going on Stranger here, on the whatever. street. Right. Um, and he said, you know, every single time you do something, the next time you can always find a better way. It was like, oh, and the tears just started rolling down my face because it's true. So when I um, launched my book, the night before the signing, the book signing and the launching, I was going through to see what I wanted to talk about. And I found a mistake. Mm-hmm. Wasn't perfect. It was like, wow. Eight people looked at this thing and nobody thought, thought that mistake. And that's what I talked about. I talked about perfection and perfectionism. And then I told everybody to go to that page in the book. And I said, so now does that make my book no good? Because there's that mistake. And of course, everybody said, well, no. So then why? So why does it have to be perfect? Exactly. I think that's really great advice, you know the struggle of perfectionism. And, you know, I make mistakes all the time, you know, even with like writing stuff for my podcast, Mm -hmm. things like that. And sometimes I'm like, oh my God, it's all ruined. I have to throw it out, you know, but I'm learning to forgive myself with the mistakes because I am an imperfect person. And everybody is no one in this, you know, even nature isn't perfect. Mm -hmm. So if nature isn't perfect, which God created, why would we be perfect? Exactly. Exactly. That's a good way to put it with the nature. <laughs> <in us. laughs> All right, Jade. Well, this was such a fruitful conversation. Thank you so much for coming on. It was such an honor. And if anyone wants to get a hold of Jade to kind of talk about how to break your paradigms, move forward, get rid of that self-talk, that ego talk, and you know, gaining confidence, whatever it is, looks like for you. All of her information is down below in the show notes. Don't be shy, reach out. And I hope to see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for listening in. Thank you so much for having Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Not Your Mama's Podcast. If you're enjoying the show, please feel free to rate, subscribe, and leave a review wherever you listen to your podcasts. We really appreciate it, and we'll see you in the next one.